Uh, there's a back and forth, by the way, speaking of the economic matters that both parties are addressing as to what to make of the tax cuts and the effect they're having on the economy. Obviously, a majority of Americans now, uh, in fact, double what was the case before these were came out the chute. Uh, now like them, uh, have a favorable view of them. Uh, Democrats are in a bit of a conundrum as to how to react to all of that. Congressman Tim Ryan, remember, he was the Ohio Democrat who was challenging Nancy Pelosi for the leadership of, of the Democrats in the House. Uh, he recognizes that. Take a look. And she runs on challenge. You're going to let that happen? Well, well, you can have me on if that's the case at some point, but uh, I, you know, I don't know if that would be the case, and I don't know how these elections are going to turn out, but I know between now and then, between now and November, Democrats got to jump on this economic message. All right, let's see how that all sorts out with the Dow of about 100 points right now. The National Review's DeRoy Murdoch is here, Fox News contributor Kat Temp, and the Wall Street Journal's senior video reporter Shelby Holiday. Uh, Shelby, are Democrats in a bit of a box here on this because not a one of them voted for this, but it's getting more favorably viewed now. What do you think? Yes, they are boxed in. Uh, we're already seeing some candidates come out and hold the vote against tax reform against them. Senator Heidi Heitkamp, for example, that's being held against her. Um, but a, a big issue here is, yes, Democrats should talk about the economy, but their perception of tax cuts does not match up with reality. And polls are showing that momentum is swinging in favor of the tax cut bill, even among Democrats. So now that Americans are seeing the tax cuts in their paychecks, now that they're seeing the benefits, uh, we did have a, a market stumble, but we seem to be back on some solid ground. And I think generally people feel pretty good about the economy. So when you oppose a bill that your constituents are happy about, right. you're in a little bit of trouble. But there is that other side of this re reflected in higher interest rates, right? I mean, responding to an improving economy with those tax cuts are making possible, right? Uh, that's an economic worry, but if you're upset about that, you can yell at the Fed. You can't yell at the Republicans. The GOP is not uh, not in there pushing up a Do tax cut. people cuts. sort that out, though, in their own head? They're just <laughs> looking at, all right, I got a tax cut, and now I know that it's more expensive for me to borrow. Do they sort that out? Who's to blame? I don't, I don't think they politically blame the GOP. I mean, we had this big, long debate about the tax cuts. The GOP won that. And uh, you would think the, the Democrats would back off of this, but instead you have Nancy Pelosi going from crumbs to Armageddon and yesterday saying the tax cuts are un unpatriotic. I Meaning if you voted, voted for the tax cuts, I guess you're gu guilty of treason. Uh, so I don't see them letting go of this issue. They're still complaining about it. They still say that if they got in, I guess the taxes, your taxes would go up. And you've got all these benefits. You have 375 companies that have uh, raised wages, given bonuses, announced something like $50 billion in investments uh, in this uh, country uh, just by Apple alone. So you have all this good stuff going on. I think it will continue uh, throughout the year. And at some point, the Democrats are either going to have to say, look, you know, we're sorry we should have voted for this thing, or at least come up with a positive agenda and change the issue. Change or the just issue. stop slamming it. Or at I mean, least that stop slamming it. Yeah, that's they unproductive. Can't, they can't stop doing that. Well, you know, young people, okay, we often talk about this, and, and we're both representatives of that. You I, and I, maybe not. <laughs> too, yeah. Not lately. But this notion that they... They might be changing their views on this, but it depends on what they see in their paycheck, right? Right. Young people, just like everyone else, like to have a little more money. And I think that it's absolutely correct that the Democrats should focus on an economic message. But I think that we can make it even simpler for the Democrats, as DeRoy hinted, have them have some kind of message. Mainly, by and large, it's just still the resistance, the resistance. Did you hear what Trump said? Did you hear what Trump did? Bad, bad, bad. And that's all they're saying. They already tried to run an election on the resistance, and look what happened. They Oops. lost that election. Oops, exactly. And still they're running on the same thing. So they need to have be for something, some sort of positive message, rather than just counting on talking down everything Trump says or does. I'm just wondering how all this factors out by November. You know, a lot of people look at this sort of thing always through the prism of politics. Um, and there's been so much else that's happened that could still yet happen that will take attention off this. But yes. I was thinking if you have the Atlanta Fed and some of these others, now even the White House itself, are pretty, giving pretty conservative economic projections, 3% growth in their part. The Atlanta Fed has dramatically revised down its very optimistic scenario for first quarter growth. What's going on here? Well, that's true. In, aside from the market uh, data that we're seeing and the market projections, we're also seeing the Republicans have a very difficult time focusing on the economic agenda, focusing on the benefits, <clears throat> because we have a president who continues to tweet about things like Russia, 
Uh, right. We have school shootings. We have sexual misconduct, foreign interference in our election. The narrative continues to shift, and I think it's a big challenge for Republicans to keep the spotlight on the positive and news, even if it's Jeff being Sessions revised down. And, and give I mean, it up, it's very difficult it's, yeah. to, to tout your message when you have a president driving the news cycle every day in all different directions. Well, it certainly help if the Republicans didn't talk about things like raising the gas tax. That's just absurd and ridiculous. I mean, uh, Voters to, will notice that. I mean, well, that, they will notice that absolutely, and not just a little. They want to go from 18 cents all the way up, I believe, to 43. That's a massive increase. Americans for Tax Reform. Now, says under that, Reagan, it was nine cents, right? Uh, yeah, but so uh, he's the last Republican president to do it. Yeah, and that was what a generation ago, right. something like that. So if, if they raise this gas tax, Americans for Tax Reform says that that will reduce the benefit of the tax cut for the average household by sixty percent. Yeah, people will feel Ooh. that. Yeah, that would be and, but and you like know, in New said, Jersey, they, they remember when they raised? I, I just want to make some point. But in New Jersey, when they raised the gas tax, it was happening at a time when gas prices were falling. So many in New Jersey didn't see the magnitude of it. I mean, could it help out for this president? Well, gas tax has been going up, so this is a really bad time to do it. I mean, maybe you could right, make the right. argument if, if you know, gas, gas prices on $1.52 right. a gallon, but they're going uh, up. So well, it's a bad I think time your point that, that <clears throat> maybe Republicans wouldn't be held responsible by voters for increasing interest rates, but gas tax is certainly something that... Oh, they'll that get the blame for that. They would, and deservedly yes, so. Their feet would be so they shouldn't the do that. I, I think that they'll get the blame no matter what. Even I don't think that people will put the interest <laughs> rates thing together as Neil had to do. They won't say, well, it's really the Fed, so I'm still going to vote Republican. But I do agree that no matter whether you like the idea or not, it's not going to happen in, in, with months to go before the midterms. It's just not in the offing. Right. Um, so real quickly, just going around here, do you guys see Republicans hanging on to the majority in both houses? I think it'll be tough. I think it'll be really tough. There are a lot of issues that are affecting voters right now, whether it's sexual assault, shootings, uh, like I said, Russia. I think people are really concerned about a Normally lot of Normally, party in things. power loses seats. I think and they dodge tough. a ball on the thing, and they don't lose the 23, 24. That could be a worry. They lose some, but not... Not all, I think they can hang on to the majority if they're optimistic. I hear yeah. my, my friends up there, they're up there diving under their desks. The economy's growing. They can run on tax cuts. They have a positive message. ISIS is down to a couple of sand dunes in the desert. There's a lot of positive news. They should be optimistic and be on the offense, not hiding and, and, and uh, sort of, you know, biting their nails, which they do now, okay. which is terrible. I think as long as we put forth good candidates instead of some of the disasters of the past, I'm sure we all know what I'm referring to there, <laughs> uh, that absolutely they could hold on to the majority as long as everyone kind of behaves themselves and stays. Including, on message, the president, including, including the president, especially the president, yeah, yeah. and uh, Democrats continue to not have a message, and I think Republicans could be in good shape. All right, guys, no that, riding to the polls on a horse. Yeah. There you go. That's exactly right. <laughs> that's, that's in the barn. That's exactly right.